Chapter 29, The First Appearance of Light. Back on the first earth, many trillions of years before the other suns are formed, after about one half trillion years since the beginning of the universe, the first sun has condensed through its first three stages of magnetism, electricity, and light. The sun, the sun is still invisible. The first earth is still enveloped in the darkness of its own ether, which only extends a relatively short distance beyond the earth's atmosphere, about 1 million miles. Soon after, the sun's light condenses further and becomes ether. This ether extends to the boundaries of the solar system and beyond, and will soon meet up with the ethers of other star systems as they come into being and eventually cover all space. The appearance of the ether for the first time allows the movement of light across space. Light depends on the ether to travel and be seen, just like sound depends on air to travel and be heard. Modern scientists are oftentimes puzzled by the sudden appearance of a star in a region where their telescopes revealed no star before. Usually they explain this by saying they did not have a strong enough telescope or due to the careless observation or some such explanation. The real reason is that the star was there all the time, forming over a trillion years, but had not yet condensed on an etheric substance by which its light could be seen. The entire spectrum of light and color from red to violet and infrared or below red to ultraviolet above red requires ether to travel and cannot be detected otherwise. When the ether condenses enough to provide movement of light, the light appears instantly as if a star appeared out of nowhere, when in fact it had been there all along, invisible. As soon as the ether of the first sun appears, the first earth is suddenly and instantly lit with physical light for the first time. This is heralded as the creation of the first moment of time for our universe. As soon as the light reaches the earth, magnetism and electricity from the sun also reach it. These two substances also travel in the ether, the dark womb of space. The sun's magnetic interaction with the earth causes a differentiation of the earth's magnetic poles, which were previously undifferentiated. They now obtain opposite polarities. The sun's electrical substance also interacts with that of the earth and causes the first movement of electrical currents. This electrical movement is the first signal for the development of growth and movement on Earth and initiates the development of new evolutionary type plants and animals from the perfect totems. The electrical and magnetic movements also cause the first circulation of currents, both of air and water. The waters of Earth are separated for the first time, allowing clouds to form and rain and rivers to flow, which had been perfectly still before then. The electrical movement due to the appearance of the sun also causes many other kinds of movements, growth and separations on earth, but perhaps the most significant is the first movement of the earth about its own axis. As the electrical and magnetic interaction between the earth and the sun increases, it increases the currents that circulate between the earth's north and south magnetic poles. These currents cause the rotation of Earth about its axis, exactly the same way that electromagnetic currents cause the rotation of an electric motor as they circulate between its opposite poles. As the Earth rotates around its axis, day and night begin to alternate for the first time. The sun rises and sets as the Earth alternately presents its opposite hemispheres, east and west, to the sun. This is the beginning of the first day. At the same time, light falls upon the surface of the earth. Light is the first substance that provides friction. Magnetism and electricity are frictionless substances. They do not cause friction to objects passing through them. They may provide opposition, but it's a clean frictionless force. Therefore, they are perfectly non-coarse substance. Light is the first coarse substance but its coarseness is so fine that it cannot be detected by instruments. It can only be known by its effects. As the light falls on the earth for the first time, and as the earth begins to rotate about its axis, creating the first hour of daytime, the coarseness of the sunlight provides enough friction on the rotating surface of the earth 
for the earth to actually roll on this friction in the same way a wheel rolls on a road. For the sake of description, the sun's rays falling on the earth can be thought of as a coarse substance as it covers the entire side of the earth exposed to it. Because the earth is spinning on its axis, the friction between the light and the surface of the earth provides traction. The traction is so minute that it takes thousands of years for its effects to show. The Earth's surface grabs on this traction the same way a spinning wheel grabs the traction on the road and moves forward. In the same way, the Earth rides on sunlight due to the friction it provides. This causes the Earth to move forward ever so slightly. The sun's magnetic attraction pulls the Earth toward itself while the sunlight gently pushes it away. The two opposing forces cause a state of balance. The Earth slowly accelerates through space ever so gently. The acceleration is so gentle that it takes millions of years for the Earth to reach the equilibrium speed of 66,666 miles per hour. That is the speed at which Earth-like planets move through space as they orbit the Sun, and is the same speed for our Earth as well. The first movement of the Earth through space is the beginning of the first year, which by far is the longest. Thus, the day and the year begin simultaneously. The day is due to the rotation of the Earth about its axis caused by electrical and magnetic currents. The year is due to the Earth's movement through space around the sun caused by the rotation of the Earth and the friction of sunlight. And thus time begins. The first Earth does not have seasons. It exists in an eternal spring where there is neither the cold of winter nor the heat of summer. This is because its axis is perfectly vertical and is not tipped over like that of our Earth and other planets. It's the only Earth in the universe like that because it's the only one formed before its sun. All other Earths and planets, including our Earth, are formed after their sun has been formed and come directly from their sun's substance. That is how our Earth was formed from our sun's substance 78 trillion years ago some billions of years after our sun was formed. Soon after the first sun reaches this stage of its completion, other suns begin to form nearby, surrounding the first solar system. More suns form farther out as the trillions of years go by until the entire set boundary of the universe is filled with stars. The planets accompanying the first earth, as well as those of other stars are formed in the following way. As soon as the sun's ether condense, condenses into existence, God's mind starts the, the sun rotating on its axis. The rotation of the sun causes a movement of its magnetic field, which reaches the earth and causes an electrical system to be set up between its opposite poles, as already described. As soon as the sun starts spinning about its axis, its etheric substance condenses further and forms gases. These gases are thrown off of the surface of the sun due to its spinning motion, or what is called centrifugal force. The gases are thrown off in large masses toward the edges of the solar system. They experience a magnetic pull from the sun such that they only travel so far before they stop and establish an orbitable circuit. How far they go depends on their size and the force with which they were thrown off. Because the sun was spinning when it threw them off, the gaseous masses continue this rotation, rotational movement given them by the sun in orbit around. They also spin around their axis for the same reason of electromagnetic current movements between their north and south poles. As soon as they reach a stable circuit away from the sun, they begin to condense further and form the last two types of substances, liquids and solids. Now, the seven substances of the solar system are complete magnetism, electricity, light, ether, gases, liquids, and solid substances. The smaller masses that are thrown off cool the quickest, forming the smaller planets and all the meteors, meteorites, and space dust particles. During this period of planet formation, as long as the sun continues to eject masses, a lot of collisions take place in space. The first Earth in the meantime is protected from the debris of these collisions by its electrical and magnetic fields, as well as a high layer of atmosphere. 
the collisions break up some large masses that could have become planets, and these become asteroids instead, scattered throughout the surrounding space. Some of the material is thrown off so far away that it forms comets whose orbits are so large that they circle the sun only once every dozens of years, some even longer. After many billions of years of this violent activity, the sun stabilizes and stops condensing. It stops throwing off gaseous material and the whole solar system becomes stable. All the planets plow their way through this debris, so to speak. The larger planets collect many smaller bodies that become their moons and hold them to themselves by a magnetic attraction. Some smaller planets lose their atmosphere and liquids to the larger planets and become dry, barren planets. As time moves on, all the space bodies establish their steady circuits. Each one finds its place in the solar system, and the solar system is complete. About a trillion years have passed. The first solar system, the abode of the first gods, becomes stable and complete at that point. Far out in space, in stages lasting for many more trillions of years, other solar systems form in the same way, including our solar system. The end result of it is that the expanded mind of the 1 billion, 8 million gods, by a process of condensation, creates a new universe. It's many stars and planets being formed, as it were, out of nothing. The 1 billion, 8 million original people live for a trillion years. That is how long it takes the first solar system to become complete. During this time, they live in their everlasting perfect bodies. They nourish their bodies with the food from the perfect plants. During this entire period, no new people are born on the first earth. After the solar system has reached a stable state, the original gods form a model society. They themselves are perfect people, having reached absolute perfection from their previous universe. They do not need an organized society. They form a model society for the benefit of their descendants. That model society will be emulated for the rest of time until the new universe reaches its own perfection, when all the people to be born in it will consciously become full God, just like their ancestors. The original gods choose 24 among them, 12 men and 12 women, to be the elders of the new nation. They choose 144 to be the chiefs and 144,000 to be the judges. They send the judges to lay the foundations for 72,000 towns over the whole earth in 12 separate countries. The people separate themselves into 12 groups of 84 million people to form 12 tribes. Each tribe has a king and a queen, 12 chiefs and 12,000 judges. They deliberately leave the divine unity or oneness of their minds. They had existed in this unity for about 1 trillion years most of which the earth was in physical darkness alone in space. When they separate from the state of divine unity, they separate themselves from the 24 elders who are the only gods that remain permanently in that state of mind. God separates himself or herself from eternity in order to bring new life to the universe, life that has never existed before. It is by this means that God creates himself or herself anew. When the universe attains its purpose, God rediscovers himself or him, herself once again for the first time. The rediscovery is a brand new experience for all the new people of the universe. Thus, God is born anew again and again, rediscovering his or her eternal and glorious infiniteness for the first time every time. That is God's whole joy, delight, and ecstasy. It is how God increases and begins a brand new experience with every newborn baby. While in the elders, he or she remains almost an eternal being who has no beginning. At the end of the trillion years, the 1 billion, 8 million gods began to procreate. They stop eating the food of the trees of life and began to eat ordinary food. Soon, most of them pass out of life and ascend after giving birth to a new generation. The new generations have no experience of divine unity. They are born as ordinary people with a lifespan of 7,000 years. This becomes the normal lifespan of all ordinary people. Part of the reason for the 7,000 year lifespan is because the seven great rituals of the black nation occur over a period of 7,000 years with one great festival every millennium. The ordinary human body or mind is designed to withstand the ecstasy of only one great ritual every 1,000 years. 
More than that, it cannot stand. Another reason is that by agreement concerning population control, 144 million people are born every millennium, such that the total number born after seven generations or 7,000 years is 1 billion, 8 million, which is the maximum population the earth can sustain comfortably forever. So the oldest generation passes after 7,000 years when this maximum number is reached. Only the leaders are long lived, but much shorter than the original gods. The 24 elders of the new generation live for 700,000 years and are the longest lived people on earth. They are trained and then initiated into the eldership by the, 20, by the original elders before they pass. The original people also established the seven great rituals. These rituals will guarantee each person the experience of divine unity. Divine unity itself is held consciously and permanently by every generation of elders. Every couple that is initiated into the eldership remain in that state of eternity for the rest of their lives until they initiate a new couple before passing. Before they all pass, the 1 billion, 8 million gods also established many other rituals and customs. They cover the entire spectrum of knowledge and science, beginning with farming, the cultivation of new plants, the taming of animals, genetics, the building of cities, commerce, agriculture, transportation, and space travel, as well as all the knowledge concerning human and societal relations, the science of soulmates, marriage, and procreation. They leave all this knowledge in the hands of their initiates. The knowledge is passed from generation to generation in the form of customs and rituals of initiations, and not a bit of it is ever lost. Soon after the second star system is completed, the new inhabitants of the first earth, the descendants of the original gods, send 144,000 settlers to inhabit it. Most star systems in the universe are created with an earth-like planet. As the planets form, one of them will find itself in, in an ideal orbit at the proper distance from the sun and about the size of an earth. When such a planet is completed, the scientists will travel to it from the first earth and seed it with life. They will take the germs of the original prototypes, first of plants, and seed them on that planet. Much later, when the plants have developed enough variety to support animal life, the scientists, or rather their descendants, will travel again and seed it with animal germs. After about a million years, such a planet will be ready to support human life. A new solar system is completed every 7,000 years, and the vast majority of them have an Earth-like planet. Thus, every 7,000 years, settlers are sent from the first Earth to inhabit a new Earth. 144,000 volunteers leave their people and travel there to start a new life. Countless trillions of planets have been inhabited this way since the beginning of our universe. That is how our own planet was inhabited 78 trillion years ago. 144,000 ancestors came here from another star system to live on our planet. After about 7,000 years, their population had increased to 1 billion, 8 million. Our Earth has been continuously inhabited since then. This settlement of the universe continues to this day and will continue, every, continue until every star system designed for the support of life has been inhabited. After many countless trillions of years, the entire universe will be inhabited and our universe will attain its purpose and come to an end. Your lessons very, very enlightening. May I know your view of the sun and creation? The sun is the generator of time. When a new universe is being created, right at the beginning, there is no time. There is no movement, no planets, no stars. Only the first earth exists by itself. So all is still and there is no way to measure time due to this absence of motion. As soon as the first sun is created by the minds of the creators, it slowly condenses and solidifies, but is without light. After it has condensed through the four stages of magnetism, electricity, ether, and light, then it shines light on the first earth for the first time. This causes the first earth to start orbiting around this new sun and that's how time begins. Therefore, the sun is called the giver of life because by creating time, it measures and allocates the lifespan of every living thing on earth. 